Let's go down to Rome's. So Brian Flores was a fantastic hire for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings last offseason. Cha- came in and completely changed the game on defense, largely with the same personnel. Yeah, what wasn't great down the stretch uh, were injuries and attrition finally caught up, uh, but light years of improvement uh, and also a- an aggressive mindset and really just getting after things. And you- you're starting to see the defense believe in themselves where you just didn't see that in, in 2022. Uh, but with Flores uh, and the lawsuit and all, all that stuff, Hanging over him. It was really disheartening to see that he didn't get a single interview request after what he did flipping around that Vikings defense. But also, it's not surprising uh, that he was sort of frozen out. Uh, so it, it could mean that Brian Flores could be the Vikings defense coordinator for a long time, uh, which uh, selfishly, I mean, I'm certainly down with that, man. And reportedly, uh, he's going to be much more involved in the Vikings offseason. So uh, this is from Alec Luce's uh, great piece uh, about the Vikings. Uh, this is in the tidbit section, so it flew underneath the radar. But uh, defense coordinator Brian Flores is spearheading the draft efforts defensively. His opinion mattered last offseason, and this year he's shouldering the vision uh, for the defense's direction. So... I mean, last offseason, uh, it was seen that, hey, maybe Flo is a one and done in this spot. Uh, so obviously he can have some say on what, what's going to be going on with this class. But, you know, the fact that he you know, probably uh, could be gone, you know, maybe he wouldn't fully be invested. Uh, but uh, he did uh, reportedly have a, a big uh, time say in getting Makai Blackman uh, out of USC in the third round. And then I'm sure he had some input on Jay Ward and Jaqueline Roy, uh, both who were relatively inert uh, this year on defense, although Jay Ward uh, played some pretty uh, decent special teams. But now it, it looks like Flores you know, could be here a while and ha- actually having a chance to completely revamp this defense and build it uh, into what he wants to do, especially from the draft, as well as I'm sure he'll have some say on for agency as well. We got Flores draft day going on. That's right. Now, yes, of course, Kwesi uh, is the general manager and the buck stops with him. And uh, the, the final word is Kwesi's. But, I mean, if Brian Flores says, hey, I love player A versus player B, I think you should go player A, all, all that stuff. Plus, I, I wonder what Flores would say about the 2022 class. Obviously, he wasn't in the building here because he was uh, recently fired from the Dolphins, ended up uh, with the Steelers for a season. But the, I don't know. Because these guys, uh, a number of these defensive players were on the team. They just didn't get the time of day with Flores in 2023. So Lewisine, of course, buried on the depth chart, coming back from that broken leg. Uh, we'll see if he can be something near three. Uh, Booth never got the time of day necessarily. Osma was often injured. Uh, Caleb Evans was benched seven times, even though physically, I mean, he may be the most talented Vikings cornerback, but he just didn't jive uh, with Flores this season. Uh, Asazi was already gone, so... I don't know. It is super interesting. But, of course, you know, Flores, you know, being able to uh, put his stamp on, on this defensive draft class. And like I said, I'm sure that he'll have uh, some say in free agency as well. I can't wait. I, I think it's really good. And, uh, of course, uh, basically having two head coaches uh, each on one side of the offense and defense as well as, I mean, Josh McCown is going to be a head coach, right? I, I feel like we know this. But, uh, again, selfishly. It, it does suck that uh, Flores is being frozen out from other head coaching opportunities. Uh, you hear the players talk about him. They rave about his aggression. They, they rave about his simplicity. They rave about him having standards and just being uh, j- just being focused on, on what they want to do on that side of the ball. So I, I can't wait. Uh, I'm really pumped up to see. And, you know, if Flores is here for two, three, four seasons – I think the Vikings defense, especially with him uh, having input on the player selection, uh, could round into one of the most aggressive, dominant defenses in the league. <laughs> That's going to make things a lot easier uh, for the offense, especially if they do have a rookie quarterback. Again, um, Patrick Mahomes showed you last year that, I mean, you can be the most talented quarterback in the world, but uh, a great equalizer would be if you have a dominant defense on the other side of you. I think the Vikings are definitely getting back to building a bully. So, hey, Flores, defensive line. I I understand you're a DB by trade. It was a great defensive back at Boston College, but we got to get back to having them meets. D-line first and foremost. Christian Wilkins, reunite with your guy from Miami. Maybe some Kyle Van Noy. Maybe maybe some Jerome Baker. I don't know. I don't know, man. Lots of options. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Brian Flores reportedly will be spearheading the draft's defensive efforts this year. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Once more the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.